Oh, let's watch this one. This is a good one. This is a recent one too. Um, the title is as follows. It says, the most fabricated story ever told. Let's watch this. This should be a good one. I think this follows, um, this features Greg Glassman, right? He's usually a good one for the Brendan banter. Let's see what this is saying. I, mean, I, I grew up huge in the comics. What, I collected it. I used to sell them as a kid. It never happened. <laughs> Who'd you... <laughs> <laughs> straight out the gate i used to sell comics as a kid i was into comics bro name name i don't know name 10 superheroes outside of the ones that you've seen in movies i dare you in dc or marvel someone's just asking that just name or name the villains name all the villains the main ones please i used to sell comic books my fucking ass man you sell to people or online just people online you know i'm 37 right. so the online wasn't a thing so i opened up a little comic shop in my mom's uh closet <laughs> yeah the comic book shop in his mom's closet oh he's he watches too many movies man that's like something that you would hear like you'd see in a movie like you know like some kid who was always that bound to make it selling fucking lemonade outside of their home or going door to door and selling fucking cookies and shit selling fucking little leaves and flowers they found in the in the fucking park to the old ladies like get out of here bro that's some fanciful that's i was always born to be a businessman entrepreneur fucking lie story people tell and here he is telling it as well it's totally made up had all my comics there. You had friends come over? Random people would walk in our house and my mom made me shut it down. Pure fiction. <laughs> how, 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 how is the closet or is it or anything? And he's only saying this because this gives him the necessary story and lore of that's why I've always been a good businessman. Because I started business and being an entrepreneur when I was young, selling comic books out. It's like, bro, you don't need... It's like the, it's like the thing that people used to do all the time on like American Idol and shit, right? like they'll be crying like when i was growing up my mom and dad would always be playing um jazz in the house my mom was in the choir my dad loved phil collins it's like bro you're just allowed to just tell the real story you realize one day you could sing and you started singing that's it what's this fanciful story about your mom being into jennifer lopez and your dad being a big ricky martin fan like come on bro like relax display or do you have more oh, no, everything was on display and How? organized wrong on Shurex? well i had it like on in those in those vanilla you know those things they look like yes i just had them all in there. envelopes yeah i had all the cording <laughs> <there. laughs> those vanilla things <laughs> you know those folders <laughs> you had these things for your business allegedly when you were young but you don't remember the name of them cool that envelopes the, the vanilla fol folders and i had all the characters lined up and i had it posters on the wall it's a total fabrication how big is this closet i mean i was young man you know eight or nine so i thought it was huge but enough for like grown men and kids to come in it never <laughs> so he grew up in the hood right allegedly he, he grew up poor but he lived in a home with a cupboard that was big enough to make an entire comic book shop in where adults so he's trying to tell you like grown men were coming to his bedroom and buying comic books and his parents just like were okay with that never happened my mom's like we can't have fucking strangers in the house not a chance how did people know that this was happening because i stood outside and had signs <laughs> It's an urban legend. So he stood outside with signs for people to come to his comic book shop. They'd come in, he'd leave the sign on the floor, sell them a comic book, and then go back outside, hold the sign, and just keep doing that back and forth, right? Cool. And it never happened. Selling comic books in my mom's closet? Yep. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> and how, did you sell any? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's such a... You know what it is? I'm just thinking about it now. Actually, let's think back. Let's be sensible. Look at that face. He does not believe him either. Here's what I think. Maybe Brendan does this thing that a lot of pathological liars do. They try to connect with you by lying 
about something you're into. So maybe because he knows Greg Glassman's like a bit of a geek, a bit of a nerd, he'd assume he'd be into comics. And he'd be like, hey, I'm just like you, even though I look like a jock, I'm also a nerd deep down because I used to sell comics. I used to play video games, right? So he does that kind of lying. Like that's the worst type of liar. Brendan's like a pathological chameleon liar. He lies depending on his environment. So if he's with some like bike riders, he's like, yeah, the, Hays the Hell's Angels wanted me to join one of their chapters, but I couldn't because I got my kids. <laughs> right? Um, if he bumps into some, I don't know, some footballers, he's like, yeah, man, I play for Colorado. I got mad crazy numbers. When he's around comedians, yeah, I do fucking theatres. I sell out everything. So he's like, based on who he's around, that's how he lies. Chameleon, pathological liar. Wrong. Were there older men that came over? Yep. Not this time. It never happened. <laughs> they bought them. They bought like, but you could tell they were just there, probably to, you know, probably to fondle me, but not a chance. What? Do you really believe that? Oh yeah, because they didn't know much about the comics. They would take like the cheapest one for like 25 cents. Did you think something was weird at the time? And So Brendan was a child who was selling comics, comics from inside his mum's wardrobe in her room, cupboard, whatever you want to call it, walk-in closet in a hood that he used to grow up in. And he also had the wherewithal to notice and recognize that these men buying comics could also be potential pedophiles. And then later on, you were called. Yes. But I, I also, like, my wow. spidey senses went off. So I'm you like, did even stranger that. Stranger danger. It never happened. Did you make money? Oh, yeah. Not a chance. So you're a little entrepreneur. now, And now, instead of comics, you're selling CBD. Sure. Is it possible this story is true? Honestly, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. I really don't. And maybe because... I've never lied to that extent. Like, I don't, I, I, again, like, we all lie, but I don't think I've ever bothered to lie to try to impress somebody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter that much. Like, I feel like my life, I'm already trying to accomplish so many things in my life anyway, that even if I don't accomplish them, the actual truth is more interesting than lying about it, right? Trying to become let's say like a basketballer, for instance, right, is actually a funner story to tell than lying about having trials with the fucking Chicago Bulls. Why would you lie? Why don't you say, oh my God, this one, this one year, I thought I was going to be a basketballer. I committed myself to a fucking six months of training, went to a fucking camp and I couldn't even get into a Saturday team or something, right? That's actually a funner story to tell. Like I paid for some trial at some, in some country. I turn up there and there's no trial. The country, the, the the place doesn't know the thing existed, so I got scammed. That whole story of you getting scammed, of you going to the place and making it fun, that's a fun story to tell. But Ben's the type of person who just lie flat out. But he's also, I think, my one feeling on this is like, he is the person who believes in the fake it till you make it. But he just stopped telling, like, when people say fake it till you make it, it's sort of like, I feel like it's a way to kind of give yourself motivation to keep going. Because, you know, this whole kind of media career, media content, whatever career that we are all kind of existing in is very difficult to achieve. Not everybody gets there. And there's no one path. So, and plus it's, it's a bit delusional to think that you would be the one to be successful. So if you give yourself a bit of motivation, I think the fake it till you make it thing is meant to keep you going, meant to keep you, you know, chugging along. But when you make it, you're meant to stop faking it because you made it now. But I think Brendan never stopped faking it. He's still he's still in that mindset of like, I have to pretend to be somebody, which is why his Instagram, which is something I've always been, I don't I don't really get anymore. His Instagram has always been the one that fucking really worried me. This guy has an Instagram with a million followers. Why? Clearly, when he started doing social media, he thought more followers means you're more famous, means you might get more opportunity. So he bought a bunch of followers to make him look like he's got a million followers. But if you check his post, it's pretty clear from his engagement that he's he's bought followers. Anybody that's no social media will know. So it's like, why would you, 
want to present yourself as a level of a celebrity that you're not. It doesn't make any sense, you know? It makes you look weird. Um, but then it extends to everything he does, right? He has a lifestyle, like, you know, with the Ferraris and the Lambos, all this stuff, and the Porsches. He has a, he has a lifestyle of a person who is like a retired baseball player, but he's just like a mediocre podcaster and an average comedian. So... I don't know. Maybe it's me, and I've I've always been a somebody that I don't know what the term is, but I'm not I'm not really material possessed. Even though I'm black, you'd think I'd fucking be into all my crazy materialistic things. But outside of the fashion that I like, I'm mostly like a lifestyle guy. Like I'm the type of person that you know I value being able to like you know treat my friends to a meal without looking at the bill, as opposed to driving around in a fucking purple Porsche. I don't really care for that sort of shit. Um, but I'm also somebody that lives according to my means. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, like, I don't understand. Because I think, I think even Joe said it. Maybe that's why Brendan gets it. Joe said he's got this thing about where, I don't know if you guys are the same. Joe says that when he was making money, when he first started, he would always buy things a little bit outside of his budget. So it would keep him motivated to keep working. But I'm not, I, don't, I mean, I'm not trying to buy things so I can keep myself on a hamster wheel. I'm trying to buy things to make my life somewhat easier, to take the kind of pressure off me a little bit. Do you know what I mean? So I would never go out and like, you know, buy something that I couldn't afford just to make me keep working. I would buy what I can and then keep building and then keep moving up the scale that way. But everyone's different, I guess, isn't it? So you can't really criticize that too much. I guess everyone's different. What are you guys saying in the chat? Sponsored by Cast Media and Go. He's definitely compensating and sees Rogan as his benchmark. Yeah, for sure. Average comedian, you must think quite highly of Papa Lowell's. Now that I think about it, his sneakers might be fake as well. Yeah, no, the, the sneakers are Garcia life. The sneakers hundred percent fake. Um, I've I've been a sneakerhead most of my life. I also know about the replica scene very well because I bought some in the past myself. And basically, all shoes that Brendan, has, especially the really rare ones from before, they're all fake because most of them, like even the ones that he's got, um, he's got the fucking um. He's got the Freddy Krueger ones at the moment now that he's been showing off. They'll, I think, if I'm not mistaken, less than 100 of those are made or something. They're very, very rare. And they are not many who are made on his size, which is like US 12 or 13 and shit. It's very hard to get those type of pairs. So to have a brand new pair and to, you know, for someone like him to have them, it just doesn't make any sense. There's not many around in the world. There's probably, probably only five left that are probably still in brand new conditions. And they're probably going for 20 grand. I don't think he's paying 20 grand for shoes. He might pay 20 grand for fake ones, but they're definitely not real, personally. I don't think that's that's true. Um, and, you know, it is what it is, really. I'm not really going to take the piss out of him buying fake shoes. I just think, for me personally, I don't, I wouldn't want to, like, I wouldn't want to be seen as something that I'm not, you know? Like, it's just, I don't know, it's just too much. It's just unnecessary, really. Like, You've got the, you've got specials like Gringo Papi and you'd be surprised out there, but yet you're turning up to the comedy store in the in the Lambo and the Porsche. Just like, it just doesn't match up. Do you know what I mean it's it's not congruent? I'd want my work to match my kind of the way I'm presenting myself. It just it feels a bit weird. It feels a bit odd. But hey, everyone's got their thing in it. Everyone has their thing. 